Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. This is Scott Richmond and Arnie Sherman. You're listening to What Do You Know on News Talk KGVO, AM 1290 and 98.3 FM. Good Sunday morning, Arnie Sherman. You know, this winter is just beginning, but I feel like it's been here long enough already. You know, with global warming, you don't know where it's going to be. You don't get any sympathy either. I talked to my friends back east it's 12 degrees in Washington, D.C. It's zero in Arkansas. So you don't get any, anybody even giving you any right. you know, good uh, pats on the back for having to persevere what we've been going through around here. So uh, it's good to be in the studio. It's good that we can uh, see some sunlight out there a little bit and uh, to talk about one of the most complex issues that face every person in this country, which is the cost of real estate, the cost of housing, you know, ever since I can remember, right? no matter where I lived, whether it was in East Coast, whether it was in Chicago, whether it was in Kansas City, didn't matter wherever I lived, there was always a discussion, a contemporary discussion about housing costs are too high, there's no affordable housing, this is a constant lifelong right. battle, right. Which, which has no solution you know, it's like rats in the New York subway system. You can, they're there your whole life. There's nothing you can do about it. You can try to fight them, but you can't win. You can't win the real estate discussion at all. I know. It's such a, it's a crapshoot. Yeah. You know, interest rates go up and then inventory goes down because people aren't selling. Therefore, rents go up and, pro, you know, housing projects. I mean, take a look at Missoula. We're about 2,000 units behind the demand here. There's so, that much demand. Yeah, it's that much demand. Some people moving in, uh, people g- getting older or growing up or graduating and wanting to live on their own. I mean, all sorts of things. Interest rates go up, you know, as they were high as almost 8% uh, in October, and then now they're, they're down around 6%. But you're not going to see any new increase in inventory here in Missoula unless the interest rates go down to 5%. So there's going to be such little such little activity. Arnie, I read a statistic that pre-pandemic the median household price was 200 across the United States. Right. $290,000. Post-pandemic it's like 440. Yeah, well look what's happened in Missoula. Last year well, what's the, Missoula? the median sales price in Missoula was 558. Wow. You know, up 4.2% from 2022 and in Bozeman the median price was seven forty eight, right, right, up ten percent right, right. from the previous year. Right. You know, and this is not just a Missoula issue, and it's not just a Montana issue. I go visit relatives in Ohio; they're complaining about how expensive everything is. Right. I'm looking around at properties there, and they've gone up. And part of this is a hollow, um, a reality. For, you know, I'll give you I'll give you an interesting statistic that I just saw: a house that is five hundred thousand dollars at Seven percent interest. Right. Interest drops one point, and people say, "Well, I can buy now," but the price will go up equivalently to five fifty. Right, right, right. So the difference between a house at five hundred at seven percent and five fifty at six percent right. on a thirty-year mortgage, nine dollars a month. You're kidding? No, there's no virtually no difference, but. People react or overreact. They're afraid to, you know, they're afraid to buy at high interest rates. People are afraid to sell when the interest rates are high because then they got to buy something else or move into something sure, else. Sure, You know, there are people in the commercial side of things. There was a segment recently on 60 Minutes about how devastating it is in New York. Unless you have a primo, primo location, like right above Grand Central Station, right. you know, or something like that, there's 40, 50 percent vacancies in the buildings there. Amazing. You know, and when those leases come due, you're going to have a really, a very difficult uh, decision to make. You know, do you, do, you, do you go to your landlord and ask for a big rate right, reduction? Right, right, right. Do you scale down the number of, the amount of space? What does the landlord do? There was a segment, I, caught, I only caught part of it, but somebody pre-pandemic offered $80 million for a building down near Madison Square Garden. 
And the guy wouldn't take eighty million dollars. They just bought it post pandemic for thirty two. <laughs> really? Yeah, that much difference. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just, it, it, but it's, but again, as I said, I talk to people all over the country, whether it's Las Vegas, whether it's L.A., whether it's New York, whether it's small towns, Hamilton, Ohio. Mm-hmm. You got the same problem. You know, li- limited inventory and increasing demand for you know to you know upgrade your life. People are doing. You know, financially pretty okay. The unemployment rate's very low. People are working. Inflation People is are low. Saving money. Inflation has come down a bit. Right. Record low. Record low. So you got all this stuff going on. So people have the the means to buy into the market, but because of all of this kind of fluctuation um, and lack of understanding of what it all means and inability to pull the trigger for for the wrong reason, not for the right reason. You know, you could buy something at seven percent now and be paying a little bit more a month because you got a deal on it, and then refinance in two years. And then the deal's What's it better. What's it going to cost you for two years? Even if it's a hundred dollars more a month, it costs you twenty five hundred bucks You're right. over two years, and then you refinance down. Arnie, I see a real estate uh, advice show in your future. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just saying. But but the, the problem is. I've never lived where someone said, ah, there's a lot of affordable property out there. No, that's true. Or real estate. Everything keeps going up. When you think it won't go up, you know, you you were lucky enough to score a place up on Flathead Lake. Right. Back in 1995, when I first was looking, came to Montana and bought a vacation place. Right. A place with 200 feet of, of lakefront was $150,000. No. And people were telling me then- too expensive. You have to ask. Too that's expensive. Ridiculous. I know. This always. Ha- I think back to those days too. Right. You're right. 1995, 150 grand for a for a, you know a 1,200 square foot place, right, with 200 feet of lakefront right. was too much money. Too much. You know, with the Californians. You know, right. back even then, the Californians are, are ruining the real estate market here. You can't even get a what? You can't even do a refurb. Uh, you know, like just a. You can't redo a, a cosmetic. Kitchen. <laughs> right. A kitchen. <laughs> You can't do a bathroom in a kitchen for 150 grand. You know, so now you say, well, you can't get anything for under a million. Ah, that's crazy. Who's going to pay a million dollars, you know? Easily. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So as a lead-in for today, we have uh, Leslie and Ed Weatherby. Yes. Who are the- Return uh, guests. Return guests. Many times we've had them on. Yes, several times, who are the developers of the old sawmill district, one of the most successful, you know, mixed-use real estate projects- in, in Missoula history, probably. Sure. They took an old sawmill, you know, that was a, a, a you know, a waste site, environmental hazard site, and converted it. And, you know, now there's lots of things going on. There's some new products that are being brought to the market as right. we speak. So Leslie and Ed will be joining us today to talk about what's going on with the old sawmill, what are some of the new products, what does that community look like, how many people are living there, what's the future like, and how does it fit in to the future of Missoula Real estate. Can't wait. Love having them on. It's always a good conversation. We learn a lot. Right. And they put, you know, they put their money and their hearts where their mouth was. And so it's great to, it's great to have them in here and talking about this labor of love that's been going on now for 20 years. Yeah, I know. This is not, uh, they, they didn't just arrive here. They've worked their way to this moment, which is great. When we come back, our guests will be Ed and Leslie Weatherby. Back after this. Arnie Sherman- we are back with Leslie and Ed Weatherby. Leslie, Ed, it's great to have you back on the show. You have a lot Thanks. of exciting things to share with us about new products at the old sawmill district. But for our listeners who aren't familiar with the genesis of this 46-acre project along the Clark Fork River, why don't you just tell us about the 20-year history? Great. Well, and thanks for having us here, Arnie. The, uh, the short version of the story is that about 20 years ago, I had a nice meeting with Mayor Mike Cadis, and he, uh, he was describing this, this problem with the abandoned sawmill, the abandoned industrial site across the river, and uh, was anxious to see something good happen with it. And we were excited to do something in Missoula, and off we went. It was really an exciting thing for me because I was born and raised here, as was my father, and um, so I had grown up, you know, coming down that big hill and going to the big T and seeing the teepee burners and, you know, and then seeing it for many, many years as I took my kids to swimming, um, seeing it as an abandoned lumber mill. And so it was very exciting to be part of that and to really take an area that had been so lively before and had just fallen into a state of 
uh, disrepair and abandonment and, and take it and make it something cool again. So back then, did you think it was going to take this long to get to where you are now? No, I had no idea. No idea, Arnie. We had we were fortunate and and we're joined we joined forces um, with a partner who a person who became a partner of mine, Kevin Mitty. And uh, it was 2003 when we began work. We had to start from annexation to platting to tearing down all the old stuff. And it wasn't until about 2015 that we were actually had all the approvals in place that we could actually build something. And in 2016 is when Poly Squares, the condominiums, were first brought to market. Is that correct? That's when we closed on the first sales. Yes, right. we were first actually sale. doing pre-sales and selling. Yes, we started construction in 2015. First building was finished 2016. So our, our thought, Arnie, at that time is that we thought we would be creating lots and selling them in five or six years and we would be off doing something else. And so here we are 20 years later. So tell us what the development looks like now. What is the old saw? The old sawmill district, the intention is that it is a true district. It's a integrated part of the city, yet has its own identity. We wanted to create community, a lively place to be with uh, lots of different types of residential product and commercial product and restaurants, food and beverage. Great place to be. We like to call it a pedestrian village. It has everything you need right there and you can just walk around and, you know, you can walk home, you can walk to a restaurant, you can go have coffee, you can go have lunch, you can go see your financial advisor, you can sure. go to see your physical therapist, you can go to the gym, and you can take a short walk and you're going to be downtown. In the park. Through the park. Through the park. <laughs> so as we enter 2024, how many people are living and working in the old Somo district? We have, well, uh, we are about a third of the way through the potential for the development. And we have uh, a little over, I, I counted it up, and I think about 540 people living there. Uh, we have 100,000 square feet of office. Um, and, uh, you know, it's hard to count exactly how many people how many people work there. And, and with today's uh, world of remote working, it's, it's even more difficult to measure. But nonetheless, it's, it's active, very active. So you, you have the Sawyer, which is a student housing project. You have apartments at Cambium Place. You have condos. Mm -hmm. You have a campus, a tech campus. So how in your mind does that all fit together before we talk about what new is going to be added? Um, good question. <laughs> we, well, we, we went at it thinking to ourselves that there were a number of pieces and parts that were missing on the, in the Missoula landscape. And what a great place to bring it all together with uh, people, as Leslie said, live, work, play, uh, really creating that village, creating that community where um, you literally can walk to work or, or walk, to, walk to you know, a neighborhood restaurant or bar or whatever. Plus, you can walk to the university because you have how many students oh, are right. in the student housing or in Sawyer? Yeah, there's. Um... We have 218 beds at the Sawyer. And it's really nice because UDASH now comes to um, right. right at Old Sawmill District. So we have a bus that picks them up, drops them off several times a day. It's free. And uh, I, I, we see a lot of students and other people taking advantage of that. It's really nice. And the trail access is one of the most beautiful trails in the city, right along the, the river, river. Right. The riverfront trail between home and the university. That's pretty nice. One so, of our favorite stories is that we have uh, one couple who bought a condo at Poly Square, and they moved here from Austin, Texas. And uh, they started out just going to be, you know, coming here and retiring in five years. And after one year, they said, forget it, we're retiring now, and we're moving. We're going to be here full time. <laughs> and I laugh because when uh, when they moved there, um, we saw them three months later, and, and um, he told us, he said, I filled up my car, I filled the tank up with gas, and it's been three months, and I still have a half a tank. <laughs> so, that's that's, that's impressive. good. Yeah. Yeah, that's but great. that brings up the other question. What kind of mix is there? How many people are moving in to the apartments and the condos that are Missoulians, and how many people are, are coming back or are new to the community? We have a lot of people who... Um, we're living in Missoula, decided they wanted to downsize, and it was amazing the number of people that were already here in Missoula that, that chose to purchase or rent at Polly's Cambium. And uh, we have a number of others who came here because their kids went to school here, and they came to visit and fell in love with it. Sure. We have others who grew up here 
and went off and did their career somewhere else. Or they came here and graduated from the University of Montana and went and did their career somewhere else and they wanted to come back. And we've got a really cool mix of folks at Sawyer who are students from all over the country. Great mix of folks. Did, did Sawyer what, – what was the impact of COVID? You know, the university shut down basically when COVID was going on. And we've seen uh, lower enrollment. And then this past fall we had an increase in re- enrollment. How has that roller coaster affected the, uh, the, the uh, occupancy rate at, at, a, at a student housing project like Sawyer? Well, I have to admit, Arnie, I was nervous. I, when we got notice that the university was closing down that year, I thought, oh, my gosh, we're, we're in right. for a tough ride here. Uh, but to our surprise, and, and actually it was just beautiful, uh, we saw so many students who decided that they wanted to be here, they wanted to stay at their place, and they wrote it out uh, as remote work, as remote students, maybe not remote, they were here in town, but they just weren't going to class. There was also a fun story there where there were four girls who had been best friends in high school all four going to different colleges, none of which were the University of Montana. <laughs> and they were all doing remote schooling. So they decided to all move to Missoula, to the Sawyer, I believe and it. be roommates. And right. they were all attending four different colleges. Right. And they didn't want to go home and live with their parents. <laughs> I understand exactly. that. Right. We talked, I could think of a lot worse places to live than Missoula, Montana exactly. during the pandemic. <laughs> right. right. We look like geniuses. Right. When the pandemic hit for all of our friends back on the East Coast, they're like, how are you so smart to think of Montana <laughs> yeah. and Missoula? I have, you know, one of the things when I worked back East, I used to work in Dulles, Virginia for AOL. And that's where I was first kind of, I first was introduced to kind of that town center concept. Mm-hmm. I think it was Reston oh, Town yeah. Center. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think Tyson's was another one. Mm-hmm. So is that really the impetus and kind of the, that, concept of like really where everything is right there do you see ultimately growing into that where you have a supermarket a a hotel a you know uh just other products and uh industrial or sorry commercial uh tenants to really create that 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 environment yeah, and every one that you're talking about is just a little bit different too big too yeah yeah much bigger than we'd have here um I, I want to say yes, but I also want to say that every piece of the puzzle has to stand on its own economically. And and in terms of supporting capital has to support investors and such. Sure. And so um, it's not as though we can be the master planners and just wish it and make it happen. Uh, everything has to stand on its own. And, and I, I say that because, for example, we really wanted to have a grocery store uh, a market in the neighborhood. Right. And with the, I think the COVID years and, and the internet brought this on with home delivery and, and of course, internet shopping, it made, it made margins and the, the prospect of a neighborhood market pretty tough. But nonetheless, I, I still hope that happens. Yeah. That being said, we do have three grocery stores all within just blocks of right, right, Old right, Sawmill. Right, right, Yes. You're right there. And well, look, and what I also marvel at is like those neighborhood kind of like the trough or rattlesnake. Uh, what is it? The rattlesnake grocery. And, rattlesnake, uh, yeah. 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 Like I love those as like mm-hmm. that's a great kind of like curated yeah. um, kind of dine-in, dine in, take out and mm-hmm. – to purchase. So Taglier opened a second location, as you know, uh, during 20... I love it. 23, and we were so excited to have them come mm-hmm. in. But they do have a little market there. They do. And it's really yes. cool. It's really fun. We love having them there. By the way, it's the only place I will go to now get Taglier. <laughs> <laughs> because the parking is so much better. <laughs> Isn't it? Is it? Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we hear that a lot. <laughs> well, plus you have, a, you have a range. You have some... You have, you know, Orange Street Market, and then you have Good Food Store, you know, both right. triangulated. Within blocks. Yeah, within right. blocks. Yeah. So it's right there. Right. It's right there. So... You mentioned it's only one third developed in terms of what the the whole vision mm-hmm. could be. Right, is the vision driven more by looking internally inside the you know the old sawmill district and what pieces fit in there, or is it also driven by the needs of the greater Missoula you know real estate market? Where, as I understand it, two thousand units behind demand and those units that are in demand may not fit into the old sawmills you know context so how are you thinking about you know growing the 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 uh, development and and what what products are you thinking about bringing in that's a there's a lot of questions in that question Um, 
I think our our plan really comes about from seeing what's needed in the community, but also what is complementary to our Old Sam Hill district. And we do, I'd like to say we do everything in a, in a boutique or a niche kind of a way in that we build 69 apartments or our next project might be 190 multifamily for rent project, a project, but it's not building 3000 of them. Like, right. like one would right. maybe think is going on out here on Mullen. Right. And so in that case, for example, the, the projections are that for the next couple of years, things will be overbuilt because of all that product coming on here. But what we're thinking about is we're going to start some stuff right now. So it'll come online about the time that the market has absorbed most of that other product. So we think about it in that way. We also think about it in, you know, if we're, if we're going to do something, 10 of something or 50 of something, we're not going to move the market needle, uh, but we're going to create something cool for the right. neighborhood. So. Leslie, talk about the two most recent new products that have been added to this, the sawmill. Yes. So we uh, we started building our townhomes, which have been absolutely beautiful. So before with condos, you know, we have certain people who like being in, in a building where they have a big shared area. We had a certain amount of people who really wanted to have that yard. They wanted to have a little bit of a little piece of ground. Mm. They wanted to not have people above them or below them. And so we... And we had planned on doing townhomes at some point. So we went ahead and started out with those. We've closed on five of them now. People who lo- live there just absolutely love it. It's so wonderful. Mm. Um, you know, I think almost all of them have pets. And uh, yeah. so we're, we're continuing to build townhomes. They're bigger. They're, um, they have two-car garages. They've got incredible rooftop decks. We're going to continue with more townhomes that will maybe not be quite as big, um, but still have that feel. But then we're also coming out with a new project that is called Warehouse Flats. And we just released that to the market about two weeks ago. And uh, that's really exciting. So it's another condo project, but we're really trying to hit a price point that makes it easier for people to um, manage. Right. And... You know, they're for people who maybe they're a single person or a couple who, no who don't have kids. It's going to be hard because they're they're a studio flat or they can be a one bedroom or one bedroom and a den and one bath. So but they're very, very cool. And uh, that's three floors. We're having parking on ground floor along with one unit, which is our ADA unit. And then two floors, nine units on each floor and an elevator. They're storage. Yeah, it's got storage. storage. Um, The parking is secure for the units. We'll have covered parking. The rest of them are all inside a parking garage, and um, it's going to hit that four fifty mark. They're starting all around four fifty. Then there's different options that they can do if they want to upgrade them. So what I've been hearing is it's going to be the perfect place for my mother to live when you know she's going to move out here or she needs to downsize from her house or someone else is retiring and they don't want to be there anymore, you know, or they, you know, they don't want to have this big of a house to take care of. Or you've got a young couple who is just starting out and they're not planning to have kids for a while. Right. Or, you know, never maybe choosing kids. not to have right. kids. <laughs> and, uh, or there's people that we know that are minimalists and they don't want to have a lot of extra right. stuff. And they, these are perfect. So, so, now, so now we have product in the old soil, putting aside the, the soy, the student housing, that run from about... 800 square feet all the way up to 2,000 square feet. So there's a lot of options available That's when right. someone's coming to look at the development. And one of the things uh, you know, Scott and I have talked about before, it all depends on where you're coming from. What is resizing for some people, it's tough for someone to go from 3,000 square feet to, let's say, 800 square feet. Mm-hmm. But if you're moving here from San Francisco or Seattle right. or L.A. or right. New York, mm-hmm. 800 square <clears throat> feet is, is a typical nice apartment. It's an acre. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, they go for seven grand in New York City. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. You're exactly right. You know, you know and the nice, it's all perspective. Yep. It's also going to be great for, you know, there might be people who come to the Grizzly games every weekend, right. whether it's football or basketball or whatever, and they want to have their place in Missoula. Right. Or they like to come here because they like to engage in the arts. And um, they don't want to pay for a hotel every time they come. Sure. And well, they really want to have their Missoula place. Or people who are getting, you know, to retirement age and say, well, do we have one $900,000 place or do we have a $450,000 yeah. place in Missoula and a $450,000 place in Arizona? Right. And just, you know, go back and forth. You know, in the, in the very early days, Arnie, we thought a lot about 
what would future living look like? And, and a lot of things are happening out there. And one of them is called Age in Place, where there's so many services now and the whole healthcare part of aging has changed. And so we look at folks who, you know, uh, they can get out and they can walk the park. They can walk downtown. They have access to all kinds of great things. And that's not something that a lot of people were accustomed to. And so when they start thinking about restructuring their lifestyle or whatever, having a place like that and having access to that kind of activity is is a wonderful thing. Well, it's always been the the, the way that Europeans have lived, right? right? Mm-hmm. Small apartments, you, you mm-hmm. shower, you sleep, mm-hmm. you have breakfast maybe, and the rest of the time you're out doing things. Right. You're out and about. Bicycling is very important, getting yes. to and from. I, I I think it's incredible. I think it's so smart. It's it's and if you look and you especially I spend a lot of time on social media for my work. Um, <laughs> not personal. Um, but you see a lot of people that are into minimalism. To your mm-hmm. point, Leslie, it's like minimalism, less is more. Less to care for, less to have to clean up. Less stress. Yes. Less stress. Mm-hmm. Right. It's it, it's actually it, exactly. It's uh, proportionate to your la- amount of stress is how big of a piece of property you have to care for. Do you feel like the city itself and the county is also providing services to further enhance that mindset, that lifestyle, like, hey, the town, right, is, you know, creating access to the town. You have the ballpark. You have concerts. Mm-hmm. You have all these other things that, to Arnie's point, like, as Europeans, they look to all these other places to kind of spend their leisure time. Absolutely. And to recreate. And that's who we are as a community. I think that that's the culture here, right? I mean, it's a recreation-focused community. Um, that focuses on the arts as well. And the arts. With I'm the sorry arts. Not, right. to, not right. to ignore that for sure. Well, I um, think there's been a change in Missoula, at least in the 25 years I've been here. There used to be, maybe because there weren't as many cultural and you know restaurant kinds of venues to go to, but people used to do more and more things in their home. Mm-hmm. And now people are meeting more and more at restaurants or at events or at activities right. rather than having a party at your house. Right. right, And I think the party of your house was because there wasn't a better option. And now there are plenty of better options. Or yeah. the shared resource or the shared community, you know, parts sure. of the property that, that uh, well, Old Sawmill example, has. You're, you're living at the Old Sawmill. You get right. to know your neighbors. You want to meet for coffee. You go meet them at the Dog and Bicycle. You don't ask them to come over for coffee. You say, hey, let's go meet. A, you know, then you have a place to have lunch. You have a place to have dinner. There's, you know, there's or options. The, or here. the co-working space. The where co-working you, space. Yeah, yeah might, I like yeah. the co-working there's more, Having that is... It's like having an, an extra space in your own house that you don't need. You can share it with your neighbors as right. you get to know your neighbors. And it's not a far walk to walk into town to do that as well, right? And that's, I know, important, important too is lighting and, and the safety of getting into town, which is what people think about. Right. And so that's why I'm saying is the, the city embraces this mm-hmm. idea too because they know mm-hmm. this is their future. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And just to give a plug for all those who, who do – or are involved in supporting the arts. Um, it's a wonderful thing on on one end of the spectrum to walk across the bridge and catch a bus to go out to the amphitheater for concerts. Right. And uh, on the other hand, it's it's uh, easy to walk to the university for a symphony concert. Right. It's hey, you're right there. You're right there, and and of course all the art museums and all in between. So, um, yeah, you, it's 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 wonderful and and the. Diversity of the things that are available to us. Are you finding that there are there are there other developers in town that are also kind of supportive and embracing this because the properties that they're coming online with are in line with what you're trying to accomplish? I would say so. Yes, I think a lot of people have. Um, they kind of are bringing or, or they're promoting a lot of the same types of things that we have brought. Right. And so we're seeing that more and more, and we take that as a compliment. Right. I, I mean, that's how I see it. I see mm-hmm. it as like everybody's pulling in the same direction. Right. Right. Well, one of the things I don't want to overlook that you contributed to, which is beyond the old sawmill residence needs, is the creation of the park. Well, you mm-hmm. want to talk about how that came about? Silver. That's a – yeah, that, Silver Park. Yeah, Silver Park. Silver Park. It's a fun story. I, it had its challenges, of course, but uh, – uh, we had master planned it when when we gained control and we had the ability to to think that way. We we master planned the park so that when you take Silver Park and McCormick Park together, it's about thirty acres of park. And and right in the middle of that is the is the baseball stadium, the, the concert stadium, and uh, just it just created a big city opportunity for us. Place like Missoula, 
you know, how many places can have 30 acres of Central Park, if you want to call it that, uh, right on the river, right? And uh, so, yes, it was complimentary to everything we were doing, but what a great resource it is for the city. Right. And even if you weren't so close to downtown, which you are, having a park right next to the development is something that's a very attractive amenity for a lot of people, particularly yeah. those that have pets and are not don't, that don't have their own yard or people that want to just go out and sit by the river. They have a, they have their own private park, basically. Yeah. And Leslie will, will tell you that, that, uh, you know, it was a, it was a difficult decision at one point and that people will tell you to maximize, optimize the real estate value that you should be building on the river. We, we should have, kept that space for for residential development and i had a lot of people that were calling they said well we want to be right on the river right and i said well you know what everyone is (laughs) (laughs) your house isn't on the river but we've left the park on the river so that everyone gets to enjoy it right and uh, and it was really the best thing because they they love where they are they have great views and they can just walk out their door for two minutes and they're at the park they're right there well, yep. the other thing which is, I think is important, you know, Providence Hospital would just pick one of the top 100 hospitals in the country and the best hospital in, in Missoula, for sure, sure. in Montana. It's Montana. number one hospital in Montana, and it's right across the river. I mean, it's a 10-minute yeah. walk, 15-minute walk to, to a major, you know, research and, and uh, you know, and specialty hospital, which is a huge selling point, particularly if you have, you know, people who are – Resizing and coming here to to retire, they want to, they care about health care, and then mm-hmm. Missoula has that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think if you expand that just a little bit and think in terms of the hospital, think of the the government buildings, not you know, but a block or two away from that, and then the university buildings as a a resource for employment and and activities, and uh, yeah, it, there's a lot going on. So, what's on the drawing board that'll be coming down the pike in the future? That you can talk about. Let's do a quick ID. Our guests are Ed and Leslie Weatherby from the old sawmill. What, 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 What's what the future look like? Yeah, what does the future look like? <laughs> Crystal ball. Um, well, you know us, and you know that we're always a little bit reluctant to, <laughs> right. but just to have general. that conversation. Because, I, you know, I think the worst thing that conceptually that, the worst thing that, that people do, and uh, unfortunately happens too often, is there's a lot of talk about there about what's this is going to happen or that's going to happen, and then it doesn't. Right, and we don't want to be one of those. So right. we're uh, we're always we're always talking about it after it starts. But uh, if you're going to stretch it a little, make us stretch a little bit. <laughs> yeah. um, we have uh, we have plans for a hotel, uh, and that could be in the form of a neighborhood in all the way to something with a significant national flag on it. That might be 120, 150 rooms. We've had conversations with people on both ends of that spectrum. Um, We are talking right now with a group that would help us uh, with the with the development of about a hundred and ninety unit multifamily uh, for rent project. Um, That's at the very early stages, so we'll we'll see where that goes. But all of these things take you know it of course years (laughs) to do, and and uh, if all goes well, those would come online in two and a half to three years from now. We're also working on a parking garage. Mm Parking garage for actually right the hotel would in, would include a parking garage so that we could help with some public parking for events right. there, but also for for expanded office and and the hotel parking. Um, we we do believe that we're going to get past this some of this remote working stuff, and I think well we'll see demand for more commercial office space. So there's some new commercial office buildings that are kind of early in the drawing process. Mm-hmm. And uh, we see that townhome area expanding. You know, the pace of that will be market driven, but but there's a lot of it, and mm-hmm. uh, we're we're excited about that too. We have a plan for seventy to seventy five townhomes in that whole area. Wow! Wow! That, that, I forgot how much space there is. Just but driving through it a couple of days ago, I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> right on the river too, which is so crazy. So yeah. there, there was talk a while back about another bridge going across the Clark Fork. Is that still being contemplated by the city? You know, Arnie, I, I I've kind of lost track of that. I yeah. don't know. Um, it was gonna, where are I, I know it? It was a between, pedestrian bridge. It was a oh. pedestrian bridge that was going to be tied into that. parked over to the what was going to be the Fox Theater project, which right. never you know. Oh, right. Okay. But it still makes a lot of sense with the number of people there to have another pedestrian bridge going right across. Sure, there is a pedestrian bridge though, yeah. isn't there? There's yeah, that, California Street. California Street. Oh, mm-hmm. So another one. Yeah, another one. Got it. Yeah, I think. Um, 
Uh, you know, for the, anybody at the city that's listening to this, I, <laughs> I, uh, I, that there's a lot of good that could come from that. It has to be done correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, there's some good and the bad that everybody knows about with regard to the California Street Bridge. So right. all that stuff has to be done uh, holistically. Well, it, would, sure. it would make sense that at some point there will be other product on the other side of the river. I mean, you would you would assume so. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, it's happened everywhere else where you have a river, right? And you have space that's available, and you know, the the Fox the the Fox Theater concepts that have all been thrown out there. Either either the developer had some issues, or the economy changed at a given time. But at some point, that will that will you know converge. And there will be a development on the other side of the of the river, well, which would, will just you know add to the to the texture of the of the of the neighborhood area. Which would be right. Which would yeah. Be nice. Which is you know it's, there's very little other options close to downtown. Another question that comes up a lot is when will there be a street light at Orange Street and Craig Lane? Yes. And uh, <laughs> yes. So yeah. So that is actually in the works. Um, it takes a very long time. We've been talking with the city about it and working things out. They want it to be at a certain level. The state department or the what is it? Montana state department, department of, of highways has to be involved. So we understand it's about a two-year process, but it is in the works. Good. Yeah. Arnie and I have to suffer through the Broadway Flynn uh, <laughs> light. Actually, there's no suffering. It's actually great that there is that 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 works. Right? Yeah, most you and I love using that road yeah. when we come back from the ranch club. I usually, yeah, I usually go down and wait at the light. Right, I, I'm okay with the light yeah. though. Uh, yeah, it's not a problem. Well, there's a light. Slow traffic here. down. Yeah, over. there is. Yeah. On the left it's, turn, you can wait for a long, long time. Yeah, during during down. the rush hour times, it's it's difficult, and um, uh, and as we project forward a few years, and there's more people living all around, and. I'm not quite sure what city planning is doing, but it just seems like right. Orange Street is getting busier all the time. It is. It is. So um, it, it'll be a good thing. Are yeah. you Are you guys surprised that um, about all this kind of like the housing, you had mentioned it before, those developments on Mullen or the ones over on Grant Creek. Right. These just boxes of and boxes of, of dwellings. Over the past 25 years, and Leslie knows this because she's been here her whole life, Missoula has morphed into a retirement, a place that people want to come to and 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 stay. Right. I mean, it's listed in, in all the lists as the best small t- one of the best small towns. Right. It is now considered a place to retire and you know live you know live work and play and, and any combination right. of all that. And uh, the COVID pandemic accelerated that because a lot of people who had the choice to move anywhere, a lot of them came to Missoula, mm-hmm. Montana. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and of course Bozeman has seen the impact of it as well. So. The role this community plays in the larger, not only Montana landscape, but the landscape of the United States as a, sure. as a venue to end, you know, to come and live instead of Florida or Arizona or Las Vegas, you know, has has grown, and that sort of has an effect on uh, this whole well, issue. You need of people, a place for people to live. Place for people well, to and, live. Yeah, to service people. And and so the the thinking here is that you, well, two things. One is, you know. A, a, a city needs lots of different price points because we have a right. mix of incomes. We have a mix of ages. The demographics are all, you know. So every every city needs to be able to, to do that. Um, then the, you also have the, the, the forces of construction costs and the force of what is the market willing to pay. Sure. And there's a squeeze going on. There has been going on where the construction costs have been going up like crazy. But – and and it's forced prices up, but uh, I think you would see a lot more development if construction costs weren't so high. So there's all kinds of elements, I, I guess, influencing that mix. And I'm I'm sad to see that the the increase of costs and the you know you still have to provide a margin for investors to fund these things. Sure. So the net result sometimes is a boxy, uninteresting looking thing that's cheaper to build. Um, and that is unfortunate. Uh, but you know, in our case, in our early days, we helped subsidize Homeward, and they have a nice, uh, nice uh, income controlled, I guess, uh, property uh, on the edge of the old Sawmill District. We have been forced, for a lot of reasons, to go a little higher end. Um, we're having to pay all of our own infrastructure costs, 
and just our costs are higher, so you have to – Sure. But that's why the warehouse flats is such a significant thing for us is that we're doing everything we can to drive that price down well, and, uh, again, to work at that that mix of – and the, and the talk about, you know, more rental property fits in with, I think, the thinking of, you know, Gen X and, and uh, right. you know, younger people. Are, the, this this mission or this life goal of home ownership is changing a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yes. Many people in their 20s now don't care about owning a home. They want to have a nice place to live and they're willing to rent. Right. Right. right, and they want to simplify their lives a little right. bit. They, they want enjoy to have, experiential, you know, the experience. Maybe if they have, you know, two, three kids and, you know, you can't find a rental place in, in that circumstance. But there's so many of them that I know that I have common contact with that are happy to rent. And the home ownership isn't their, their driving ambition and goal to show that they're successful people. I, that's that's really true, Arnie. And I think it's interesting. And, I, you know, we have we have five boys and all in their, you know, in their young adult lives. I mean, 30 plus or minus, well, now plus 30. 30. <laughs> 30 plus. Um, but uh, uh, we've we've heard that also. And, I, you know, on a personal level, we encourage people to buy homes because the earlier you start, the earlier you start to save, you know, all that stuff. If I, when, I, when I was 30, I couldn't imagine, I mean, 60 years old seemed like 200 years away, right? Right. right. And... Uh, <clears throat> And so the idea of, of establishing some net worth or creating an opportunity right. for net worth is important. And, and home ownership has been a key part of that for a lot of people. Matter of fact, I think I read somewhere that most of the net worth in uh, the baby boomer generation is through their, their homes. Sure. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, your sons, it, uh, how, what are your sons? You, you know, they're in their 20s. They're all late in their 20s. 20s. Late 20s. What do they well, think about ownership? I think, well, my oldest is with a gal who owns her place. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Smart so guy. she moved smart in. Smart guy. <laughs> really smart. Yeah. For you, particularly. No, but I think, I think it, you know, well, I want to encourage our boys to own homes. and to mm-hmm. have, It's for savings. It's, it's equity. You're building equity. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yes, that aspect of kind of building your financial viability seems harder with interest rates going higher and the cost of a home, but there are places that they can enter. You know, and you know that's the yeah. Thing. I, I and I, I I just want to get this out there too. I what I need to remind people. We we've all seen it, but when I bought my first home, I was thirty. Interest rates were twelve percent. Exactly. Um, I had no money. Well, I had a little bit of money for a down payment, um, and I had a. Uh, uh, I had a mother-in-law who basically guaranteed the loan. Perfect. Right? <laughs> um, but I didn't know how we were going to afford the mortgage. I mean, it was – even with two incomes, he stretched. it was very much a stretch. And I, I, I just – I say that because I hear so often, well, everybody should be able to buy a home and everybody should be able to rent the nicest place in town. And it never has been that way. No, that's I've true. I've never Ever. not had roommates. Ever. Right? Yeah. Never not had roommates when renting an apartment and, and – Always, we're stretching to get into that that first home. Well, in all the houses that I've owned, you know, Linda and I were both working when we we bought them. It was always a stretch. Yeah, one was eighteen thousand, one was thirty four thousand, one right. was fifty four. It was always a stretch oh, even at that then, time. Right, yeah, right. that seemed it's like all a relative, lot of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so, it's incredible because but it is difficult. I, there's a lot of folks right now rolling their eyes at what we're talking about. <laughs> And some of the statistics make it look, and I, I mean, it's always hard. It may be harder now than it has been. But uh, it was never easy. I'll tell you, we know that it was never easy, and no. and it's and always things seemed overpriced. Right. Well, yeah. You, how are you ever going to do that? I remember in 1983 in Chicago, I was renting an apartment in a three flat right downtown Chicago in North Fremont, and the building went for sale for eighty thousand dollars. Three mm. apartments, and I said, no one. No one's ever going to pay eighty thousand dollars for this building. Yeah. You know the apartments in that building now rent the three of them. They rent for twenty five hundred dollars. Twenty five hundred. Yeah. Each, right? Each. Yeah. yeah. And the building's yeah. worth you know more, you know two million dollars mm-hmm. probably. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think the message that, that I would like people to hear, and I I certainly promote it, is yeah, work hard, save hard, um, and you know we live in this beautiful college town. It's not like our in. I don't know that college towns anywhere have the highest incomes or, you know, it's you, you give up something for lifestyle usually. And that's unfortunate. But 
I, I think we love being here and we want to do our part. Yeah, and you've made an amazing contribution. I think back to the first time we met in our first conversation on this show when when old sawmills really just getting online and think about how much has changed. Mm. And it's been eight years. And it's just incredible. You've made such an amazing contribution to the community. And, uh, you know, you probably take incoming from all different angles. And that, that happens, right? right? But at the end of the day, the community is better because of it. So that's great. I mean... Mm. Well, thanks. I, I, we're proud of it. To do. We're proud of it. We, the uh, you know, it's been over a hundred million dollars built out there, and mm-hmm. and that equates. You, it's counted different ways by different economists, but it's on the order of like two thousand jobs that are created through all of this, direct, indirect, and you know the way money flows through communities. So it's a it's a big deal. Let's do this. Let's take a quick break. That went by too quickly, and let's do some final words right after this. Arnie, we are back with Leslie and Ed Weatherby. Well, we hardly broached the subject of food, one of our favorite topics. We we talked about the deli. We talked about uh, you know, every morning uh, you know, going dog and bicycle. But you have probably the premier dining spot in Missoula in the Boxcar Bistro. So tell us about it. More than just that we love it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's hard getting a reservation sometimes to get it, to, you know, to go there. This yeah, is not very well, large. Well, uh, Boxcar Bistro is it's named uh, to be, I guess, to give homage to the homage to the the, the whole industrial rail stuff that was going on here historically for a long time. But we wanted it to be this cool thing that that kind of reminded you of these decadent train car restaurants from years oh, yeah. gone by, yeah. and because <laughs> uh, it was small, it is small, you know, and. And uh, it's a passion of ours. We we love the food. We we encourage our our folks in the kitchen to explore and to uh, to experiment with things, and and uh, and yet hopefully be consistent enough that people keep coming back and enjoying what they had the, the prior time. And right? you can get caviar there whenever. No, you go, I I enjoyed it and yes. great service too. Uh, that's the key: is yeah. the service and the food. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good team. It's, it's a, a great good team. team. Yeah, just, we, just book your reservations ahead of time. You can't just pop in. <laughs> January is a really good time to go. Yeah. You know, as in the rest of Missoula, everybody's slow in January. Yep. How did you attack? Ta- how did you um, attract Tagliari to come there? I mean, that's a uh, fun, that's a great one. So let me let me correct you because they corrected me. It's pronounced Talier. 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 Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we so, uh, so we we have enjoyed their their other location down on South Higgins. Yes, and uh, uh, just always admired what they do, and 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 somehow we ran yeah. into them. Conversation we started, started talking and, to them a long time ago. In fact, I think before Matt Benzel bought it, we were talking yes. to the original owners, and and uh, and then Matt bought it, and then we started talking to him, and you know we've been so after a couple of years, you know. Talking to over, and then we have this new building coming on, and we had the perfect spot for him. And he's like, "Yep, yep, I think I want to do it." So best, we're best just Sam so great excited. Guy. Great guy, yeah. Easy, yeah. easily. So most yeah. importantly, as we bring this to a close, how do people get a hold of you? How do they find out about what's going on and what's available and how to move? So you move can, in. You can go to our website at oldsawmilldistrict.com. And that will give you a link to all of our projects. It'll tell you all about the history, just everything that's going on. You can also go to uh, my real estate website, weatherbygroup.com. Or you can call our office at 406-203-3015. And you can reach me there. Fantastic. Great update, by the way. Great reconnecting with you guys. Thanks, guys. Always fun to be here. Yep. It's always fun to hear what's going on and what we can look forward to. Absolutely. Arnie, I'll see you next week. Scott, next week. Thank you for listening to What Do You Know? I can't wait for the next show, Scott. I'm excited too, Arnie. If you'd like to suggest a guest, send me an email at scottrichman at townsquaremedia.com. We'll see you next week. And thanks for listening to News Talk KGVO. Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. 
Prize picks. Pick more. Pick less. It's that easy.